During the operation in the Kursk region, Ukrainian troops are gaining a lot of experience. In the future, this will allow them to conduct similar operations in other territories in Russia. This was stated by the chairman of the Council of Reserves of the Ground Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Ivan Timochko, on the air of the Espresso TV channel. According to him, in the future, the Ukrainian Armed Forces will be able to use another tactic of warfare. For us, the Kursk operation is a military operation, the analysis of which will make it possible to conduct similar operations in the territory of the Russian Federation or to use the tactics and strategy of conducting a mobile war in the future, Timochko said. He added that the Ukrainian troops gained experience working on enemy territory when there is no support from the local population. This also affected the Russian Federation. The Kursk operation directly affected the internal distrust among Russians since we saw an unconsolidated population and this destroyed the image of Kadyrov and his paramilitary associations, which led to local clashes in Russia, says Timochko. The chairman of the Council of Reservists is convinced that holding the bridgehead in the Kursk region is important for Ukraine. Since we do not know what geopolitical challenges await us in the coming months, what the world reaction to the war in Ukraine will look like after the US elections. He concluded, despite repeated attempts, Russian forces have failed to dislodge Ukrainian troops from their positions in Russia's Kursk region. Now North Korean troop reinforcements are on the horizon. Ukraine anticipates a boost in Russian troop numbers in the Kursk region soon. Intelligence reports indicate that Russia plans to deploy forces from one of its key allies, North Korea, to this front. Up to 13,000 North Korean soldiers are under consideration. Currently, these troops are undergoing training at Russian military grounds and are coordinating with Russian units, including working with translators, as language barriers pose a major challenge to synchronizing forces. In the occupied territories, Ukrainians live in constant fear, and so it will be in the future. This fact must be understood by the Trump team, which wants to secure the right of the Russian Federation to the occupied territories. Journalists from The Economist write that under the new government in Washington, they must be aware of how people live in the occupied territories. One of the representatives of the Ukrainian resistance stated that in the occupied territories, people are afraid of each other and especially of expressing their views out loud. If you don't have a Russian passport, you have no rights. It's like being a refugee, but only in your own land. All key positions are occupied exclusively by Russians. The population with pro-Ukrainian views is afraid of ending up in the basement. It is worth remembering that there is not a single Ukrainian school in the occupied territory and the entire curriculum is Russian without a Russian passport. It is impossible not only to send a child to school, but also to receive medical care. Nikolai Petrov, an employee of the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, said that the Kremlin is using repressive methods to curb Ukrainians in the captured territory. At the very beginning of 2022, 6.4 million people lived in the occupied territories of Donbass, but now only 3.5 million remain. Due to an acute shortage of labor, the Kremlin is sending citizens of its own country to the occupied territories. The war between Russia and Ukraine is escalating as newly elected US President Donald Trump promises to end the conflict. According to the Wall Street Journal, Trump has not yet said how exactly he plans to end the war. At the same time, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he is ready for peace talks, but only if his previous demands for the transfer of occupied Ukrainian territory to Russian control are met. It makes sense that both sides are trying to make any progress if there is a chance that peace talks can take place, said Ruslan Pukov, head of the Moscow-based center for analysis of strategies and technologies. While Russia is trying to make progress on the ground, Ukraine's best chance of responding is drone strikes. Moscow has plugged some of the holes in its troop numbers with North Korean soldiers, giving the Kremlin the option of avoiding a broader Russian mobilization, although they are unlikely to have a lasting effect. 
without further reinforcements. Ukraine, however, has even more serious personnel problems, the newspaper notes. In addition, there is a threat that the United States will cut off military aid to Ukraine, which will leave it vulnerable both on the front lines and in the rear, where the air defense munitions provided by the United States are a valuable resource in the face of Russian bombings. China put its cutting-edge J-35A stealth fighter on show at a biennial air show in the country's southern province of Guangdong on Tuesday. The display shows China's aspiration to assert itself as the preeminent military force in the Asia-Pacific region and a major player in the world's arms trade. Exhibition flights also included jets such as the J-1-10, J-20 and the ZNYU-20 transport and refueling plane drew plane spotters from across the country. In addition to asserting control over Taiwan, the self-governing island democracy that China claims as its own territory, China is also using its navy, air force and other weapon systems to drive off competitors from the Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam and others in the South China Sea. Russia's participation in the air show symbolizes the unity between the two authoritarian regimes over the war in Ukraine. Shortly before Russia's full-on invasion of Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin visited Beijing and the two leaders deepened bilateral ties. China's defense ministry has consistently grown by leaps and bounds, including aircraft carriers, the world's largest naval fleet, a massive missile armory and moves to grow alliances with Central Asia. Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific.